With that, it's time to move on to the next item of business. And the next item of business is consideration of the business motion uh, 11374 in the name of George Adam on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out uh, the business programme. And I call on George Adam to move the motion. Thank you, President Officer, and moved. Thank you, Minister. And I call on Stephen Kerr to speak to and move Amendment 11374.1 up to five minutes. Mr Kerr. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Having consulted with my party's business manager, I am pleased to bring this amendment to the Chamber. Um, I've been quite shocked, actually, that there has been no attempt uh, by the government this afternoon to seek to put into the business programme of this Parliament um, any kind of ministerial statement about the announcement that broke this morning about the end of refining at Grangemouth from the spring of 2025. People who watch these proceedings have been shocked that an attempt, any attempt to raise this matter in this chamber has not made any progress. Constituents yep. have been in touch with me, worried and concerned. They're worried and concerned about their jobs and livelihoods. When people are faced with uncertainty and fear about their futures, it is reasonable for them to look to their parliament for some sort of assurance that their elected representatives are at very least aware of the issues. They look, they, I, I will give way. Michelle Thompson. I'd like to note that I too, as a constituency MSP for Falker East, of course, I'm shocked about this as well, and I've spent this afternoon in already in dialogue with Petro Ennis, and I've got a meeting tomorrow with the union, and indeed had submitted an urgent question to address exactly that. So perhaps he'd be willing to allow me to carry out my role tomorrow as a constituency MSP, if he was agreeable. Stephen Kerr. <coughs> I would, I'd expect nothing less from Michelle Thompson than she has taken the interest of her constituents to heart and has set up these meetings. However, that does not negate the responsibility of the Scottish Government to bring a ministerial statement to this chamber to allow members of this parliament the right to ask questions and to seek assurances and answers. Now, as I say, people do expect their government to work to secure their best interests. So I think it's reasonable to expect, and it's certainly reasonable of my constituents and Michelle Thompson's constituents, to look for those assurances from the government and it should be raised in Parliament. That is why I'm asking ministers for a statement tomorrow. I think that is reasonable and it is proportionate given the impact on the entire Scottish economy. Grangemouth is responsible for 4% of the Scottish GDP. It produces the fuel that we... Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to get any time back by giving way, am I? Uh, not really, Mr. So I'm going to continue, please, because I, there are some things that need to be said about the importance of this. This is the place that fuels our cars, our buses, our ambulances, our police cars, our fire engines. It fuels agricultural equipment, emergency generators. Fuel, <laughs> need it be said, is important. Now, we know that the SNP and the Greens have shown latent and open hostility to the oil and gas sector. And I think... I think we need to understand whether this has been a factor in the decision of Petro Ineos to end refining. Now, in 2016, the Scottish and UK governments worked together to maintain gas processing in Grangemouth. I think it's worthy of this Parliament to ask questions of ministers. Is that being explored now? Is there an option for the UK government and the Scottish government to work together in the best interests of our constituents? What policy does the Scottish Government have about the importance of domestic production of petrol and diesel? And how does the potential removal of large-scale refining from Scotland, how does that impact on emergency planning, on our resilience, our economy? What will the Scottish Government do for the employees of the plant affected by this proposed change? What support will they make available for the people of Grangemouth? These are all questions that we as members, especially those representing Grangemouth, have a responsibility to ask. These are questions that it is reasonable for our constituents to hear being asked with answers from ministers. One cannot help but wonder if this plant and these jobs were at risk in Glasgow or Edinburgh, if the government would have already scheduled a statement for tomorrow. And I note, 
Well, members may disagree with that last point, but that's a consideration for people in central Scotland. And I note that the First Minister has seen fit to make a statement about the Grangemouth situation. I understand it was in Butte House in front of journalists. So I don't understand, and I don't think it's unreasonable, for a statement on this crisis to be made here and for questions to come from elected members. And I note that Neil Gray, the relevant Cabinet Secretary, has offered to meet some of us in a Zoom meeting, a private Zoom meeting on Friday afternoon, and that's good. But let's have an open discussion and statement in this chamber uh, ahead of any such private meeting. I am grateful for your indulgence, Deputy Presiding Officer. If our Parliament is not here to discuss matters of importance like this for the people of Scotland, then what is it here for? Mr. Kerr, can you move your amendment? Yes, sorry, I did. I thought I did. At the initial, okay. but I do move the amendment. Thank you very name. much. And I call on George Adam to respond on behalf of the Thank Parliamentary you, uh, Bureau Preside. Minister up to five minutes. Please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. At the heart of this discussion and debate are the families and the people employed uh, at BP Grangemouth. And these are the people and the community that the Scottish Government takes very seriously, where, and the Cabinet Secretary particularly, when we are discussing this. The Cabinet Secretary is currently seeking to meet with the trade unions. Uh, and let's not forget that this whole decision is a commercial decision taken by the industry and is not a decision or a responsibility of the Scottish Government. The Cabinet Secretary has today invited his shadow spokespeople and MSPs from uh, the area to, to a meeting to discuss this. And the Cabinet Secretary also answered questions on this important issue earlier today and is committed to updating Parliament as the situation develops. Presiding officer, on a, on a kind of more business, uh, parliamentary business uh, point of view, Mr Kerr's amendment to business came in at 4.59pm. It literally came in after the first division bell had actually... Uh, the first division bell had given way. Yes, I'll give way to Mr. Uh, Kevin Stewart. Um, thank you, Officer. Now, I thank the Minister for giving way. Uh, Mr. Kerr, uh, President Officer, had the opportunity uh, to ask questions around about Grangemouth this afternoon, uh, as other members did. Uh, but after a point of order, um, which uh, was dealt with by the presiding officer, which he was unhappy with, he chose to flounce out of the chamber when others actually asked questions about Grangemouth. Uh, I wonder if the minister would like to make comment on that. Minister. Well, I think the member makes a very important point here. At two o'clock, there was that point of order, and then this amendment came in at 4.59 p.m. after the first division bell had rung. Yes, Stephen Mr Kerr. I'm grateful to the Minister for giving way. Let's first of all address the issue of two o'clock. I did attempt to raise a point of order. It was dealt with by the Deputy Presiding Officer. I did not flounce out of the chamber. I had another... I had another important... I had another important obligation that I uh, left the chamber to fulfil. Members may find that funny, but serving my constituents is something that I take seriously, and I hope they would as well. And just one last point, on the 4 o'clock, on the 4.59, I think he said, Marta, the business manager for the Conservatives has been trying all day since the announcement was made from Grangemouth to get a minister to agree to timetable... To timetable uh, a statement. The fact that they haven't, and we've come to this point, reflects very badly on the priorities of the Scottish Minister. Government. Minister. This Parliament has processes, and one of these processes is parliamentary questions, and I would think Mr Kerr needs to have a look at himself and actually decide how he's going to interact with this Parliament. 4.59 is not an acceptable time and a matter of such importance for the individual to do that. So, finally, presiding officer, I believe that this, he is not showing this Parliament any respect and it's disgraceful. But I revert back to what I said at the very beginning. We are not important in this issue. The families involved in this are the ones we should be thinking about. Thank you. Right. The question is that Amendment 11374.1 in the name of Stephen Kerr, which seeks to amend Motion 11374 in the name of George Adam on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau, setting out a business programme be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yeah. 
Parliament is not agreed. Therefore, we'll move to a vote and uh, there'll be a short suspension to allow members to uh, access the digital voting platform.